In Zerto 8.5, uh, there was a new feature released, uh, which allows you to send your backups directly to cloud storage. Uh, specifically in this video, we'll walk through setup and configuration of this feature, and we will be targeting an AWS S3 bucket, uh, which we will use as a repository for Zerto. Uh, before we actually do any work in Zerto, though, we will first need to go into the AWS Management Console and set up some prerequisites. Uh, following that, we'll, go, we'll then go into Zerto and create the backup repository, uh, followed by the creation of a virtual protection group, uh, and then enable that retention to go to that repository. Uh, so this, uh, if anyone's seen my video or read my paper on the AWS Storage Gateway, uh, this is outside of that and completely, uh, well, not completely unrelated. It still uses S3, uh, but we will be foregoing that appliance altogether. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, here is my lab. Um, very simple, I've got a home lab that's running one ESXi host. Uh, I've got my Zerto Virtual Manager here. I've got my virtual replication appliance for this host right there. Um, and then the target workloads we'll be protecting are gonna be these three Kubernetes uh, nodes. Uh, this is my Kubernetes cluster um, that I'll be protecting out to S3 for long-term. All right, uh, we've got a clean Zerto environment. It was freshly installed. On 8.5 uh, and then here's our console so first thing we're gonna do in the AWS management console is we're gonna make sure that we're gonna pick we pick a region that is close to our location so I'm in Washington um, and I'm gonna obviously choose Oregon because that's the closest uh, region Let's go make sure we're there uh, next we're gonna go into uh, the s3 uh, console and we're gonna create a bucket uh, to use for this. Uh, the setup for this is really simple. Um, just hit create bucket, give it a name. I'm just gonna call this sort of repository. Uh, make sure that it's in my region. Uh, we're gonna make sure we block all public access because we don't want anyone on the internet uh, finding this and downloading your data. Uh, we'll disable bucket versioning. Uh, you can add tags for billing, you know, things like that, uh, but I'm not going to do anything because it's pretty simple. I'm not going to do any encryption, uh, and so I'll just create a bucket. Right, there it is. Uh, I'm going to go into the bucket because we're going to need this resource name uh, as we create the policy. So next thing we're going to do is go into IAM, and I'm going to create a uh, policy for this. Right. Just going to use the visual editor. I'm going to choose S3 as my service, and then we've got some predefined permissions. Um, you could, in a test environment, if you really wanted to see if this works, uh, you could just give it uh, full rights to S3. Um, it's going to work, but. Uh, what you really want to do is secure it to make sure that only this user is allowed to access that data and protect it um, because this is going to be your uh, your restore points, right, uh, if you need it, or compliance. All right, so just going to expand everything here, and we'll walk through it. Now there are, let's see, two, four, six, there are eight permissions we're going to need to apply. Uh, so the first two are going to be under list. Uh, we're going to select list all my buckets and list bucket. Uh, and then we're going to go under read and we're going to select get object and get object ACL. So get object, get object ACL. Uh, keep in mind if, if you're familiar with building JSON files for IAM permissions out in uh, AWS, feel free to do that. You can pre-configure it with uh, with the, the permissions here um, to save some time if you don't want to click around. Uh, under write, we're going to be selecting uh, put object and delete object. So there's put object, there's delete object. And then under permissions management, uh, we're going to do the put object ACL and the delete bucket policy permission. All right, so that's all we need for permissions. Uh, so do is I'll just collapse all of that. Uh, now we're going to assign these two resources. 
All right, so remember that ARN or that resource name that uh, I had on the other uh, NS3? I'm going to add that here. So uh, the ARN is based essentially all of that plus the name of your bucket. So I'm going to choose that, add that. And then for objects, I'll, I just want to give it access to all the objects within that bucket. Uh, because it is the only, uh, uh, I will only have one account doing this. All right, so next we'll review the policy, give it a name. Let's call this Zerto Backup Policy. Let's give it a description. Simple, descriptive. If anyone has a question, they know exactly who to go to. All right, so create the policy. And if we search for it, there it is. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is create a user. So we'll go add user. I'm gonna call this sort of backup user. I'm going to give it programmatic access, which will then enable me to get an access key, uh, key ID and a secret access key. I'll choose permissions. I'm going to attach this to an existing policy. I'll search for Zerto. I'm going to choose that there. Next. Uh, again, you can add a tag if you want. Um, if you're doing chargeback and based on tags, then you can go ahead and add that here. Uh, but I'm not doing any of that, so let's just go next review. And if everything looks good, I'm going to create the user. Now, before you close this window, uh, download the CSV file, which will contain the access key ID and the secret access key. So I'll just save that onto my desktop or my server here that I'm working on. Um, but then I'm going to copy this and I'm not worried about anybody watching this, seeing this because I'm basically going to blow it away when I'm done. Good luck trying to get in. Okay, let's copy the secret access key. Um, so it's important to download that file because you won't be able to see this again uh, unless you have that file. Okay, so now I've got that information. I've downloaded my CSV with my, my uh, credentials. I'm gonna hit close. So three things we did. Uh, first, we created the S3 bucket, um, and then we created a policy uh, that only gave permissions to do backups to that S3 bucket. And then when we created the user, we attached that policy to the user. So if we click on the user, um, you can see that it's attached directly to this backup policy. Uh, so one more thing you can do here, if, uh, if this is your first time doing it, you want to be able to repeat it down the road, uh, you can go into this backup policy, uh, click on JSON, and copy this into a text file and save it elsewhere. Uh, a couple of things I noticed when I created another account and attached this, or created another policy using the JSON is for some reason uh, the list all my buckets and the list bucket uh, permissions were gone, uh, but I haven't been able to repeat that. <laughs> so uh, just be aware, uh, check all the permissions. Um, uh, I will have documentation along with this that will call out all these permissions, um, as well as a copy of the JSON that I have. Um, and then the other thing about this file here is under resource, uh, if your bucket is not named Zerto repository, just go in here and change that to what you named it. Uh, and then you'll be good to go. All right, so now that we're done with that, uh, we're gonna go over to Zerto. And under setup, we'll go to repositories and we're gonna click new repository. Give this a name, select Amazon S3. We're gonna choose the region. Um, so a couple of options here. I'm gonna choose my region first, which is West 2. Uh, if you have the actual endpoint URL, and you can put that in here if you don't want to select the region. You want to, you want to just specifically call it out. But if you put the region itself, then you don't need to 
use this endpoint URL. I'm going to give it my uh, bucket name, which is Zerto Repository. The storage class I want to use, um, I'm just going to go with standard for this, uh, but you can do standard infrequent access or one zone infrequent access. It's really up to you and your, your business requirements. Uh, now here's where I get that access key. I'll just copy it from my other file, paste that in there, and you can tell how many times I've done this. Um, and then my secret key that I copied earlier. Now if you didn't copy it off earlier, just open that CSV file and uh, get the information out of there. Just make sure you keep it safe and don't lose it. Uh, since this is my first and only repository, I'm just going to set it as default. Hit save. And there we go. There's our repository. Um, now the next thing I got to do is, because I don't have any virtual protection groups, I don't have any data to send there, so I'm going to create a virtual protection group with those uh, with my Kubernetes cluster. All right, so just call this my Kate's lab cluster. I'll go next, choose my VMs, add them to the selected VMs, and I do have a boot order here, so I'm going to add a group here. I'm going to call this worker nodes, or Kate's worker nodes. And I'm going to drag these guys down here. And because these are pretty lightweight Linux boxes, um, it doesn't take very long for them to boot. So uh, I'm going to set a boot delay of 30 seconds after the master boots up for these worker nodes to boot up. And this is this only comes into play when you're actually performing a failover with Zerto with a short-term journal. Um, doesn't really come into play with the, the backups. But I like to configure things. so. <laughs> and then just show how this, this all works. So, uh, so there you go. go next, uh, because I only have one site, I'm doing a self-replication back into my home lab. I've only got one host, so I'm just gonna choose the host. Uh, data store, I'll choose my VM data store. Journal history, I don't care about too much because this is, this is not uh, critical for me. Uh, one hour is the lowest journal history Zerto can do. Uh, and then target RP alert, I'll just leave it default. Um, test reminder, I don't need that. Uh, sure, we'll enable WAN traffic compression. Um, would be interesting to turn it off since it is the same site and only one array. So I wonder if that helps or uh, inhibits any performance. But it worked for me or earlier when I tested this, so uh, we'll just leave it on. All right, so I'm not going to change anything on these. These are all single disk VMs. My failover move network is going to be my bridge network, uh, so it has access to my local uh, lab network. My failover test network, I'm going to do isolated. I created a, a sandbox network ahead of time, so if I wanted to do a non-disruptive test without having to take those source machines down, um, I can. Uh, they, they won't uh, create any IP conflicts. The recovery folder, I'll just stick this in the discovered virtual machines. Um, I don't have any scripts. I'll just go to next. Uh, I'm not going to be changing any of my IP addresses, um, not even for tests since it is an isolated network. Uh, now I'm going to enable long-term retention, and you can see since I set that repository as default, uh, it's going to already select it, um, and obviously I only have one, so that's, that's another reason why. Um, I don't want to do any indexing uh, because I, I, I did not set up an SMB share uh, for the indexes, and you cannot run indexing to the S3 repository. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You will need an SMB share configured in your Zerto site settings to do indexing. Uh, now I'll choose my retention summary. Uh, I'm not going to back stuff up out to S3 on my own dime um, routinely uh, for a month. So uh, let's just go with, uh, I want to keep this for two weeks. It's fairly cost effective. Um, I believe uh, storing in S3 is about, well, if you're going off public information on AWS's site, it's about two cents a gig for the first 50 gigs, I believe. Um, and then bringing data out, it is about nine cents, nine cents a gig, somewhere around there. Uh, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, egress charges do, uh, uh, do get racked up if you continually pull data out of there, uh, which, which goes to show that uh, this is really designed for those long-term compliance-based requirements to keep data out there, uh, where you want to send it out to the cloud. You don't want to worry about maintaining storage on-premises. 
just for your long-term retention to be compliance. Uh, what you do want to do is uh, set your journal history locally or, or in your DR site uh, for, for as far out as you need to go. That's going to be your first line of defense for restoring a VM or restoring files. So uh, you only want to rely on that retention set out in the public cloud if you absolutely need it and it's beyond your journal history. Right. Um, since it is 1.25 p.m., uh, I'm going to set this to run my retention process at 2.30, and we'll see. Uh, I'll just let it kick off. If it finishes before then, then I'll just manually run it and get that job done. Um, but we'll set it to that time in case I get pulled away from this and uh, can't do it uh, myself. All right, so the next tab we're going to get is a summary um, of everything we did. Uh, here are my VMs, my total provision size. Uh, one thing to point out is this is my total provision size. Zerto does zero elimination on backups. So when you send the data out to your backup repository, Zerto is only going to back up the ones on those disks. Uh, anything that's a zero is going to go into a metadata file uh, to be pieced back together upon restoration. Um, so if I'm only consuming uh, six gigs on a given server out of 22 provisioned, uh, it's only going to back up six gigs. So it does save on your transfer times and your uh, storage consumption as well. So everything looks good. We'll click done. And we'll let that kick off. Um, and as every baking show skips through the paint drying process, I will pause this for now and let this complete. Um, and then I will be back to demo uh, restoring data from uh, S3. All right, be back. Okay, so we're back. Um, initial sync has completed. Uh, if we go and look here, we can see that I've got some checkpoints already being built up. So far I've got 114 checkpoints. Uh, so everything's working and it is before 2.30 right now. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna go to the, on the VPGs tab here, uh, click on the ellipsis at the end of the line of the VPG uh, or virtual protection group, and I'm going to kick off the run reten retention process. Now this is going to kick off that backup job and send the data out to S3. Um, so let that run. Uh, if you want to monitor it, you can either click on the VPG name, open it up, and then you'll see any running tasks in here, uh, or you can go into the monitoring tab here uh, and then click on tasks. and if that's not the only task running, then um, you'll see a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, don't mind the red stuff here. I ran into a network issue on my <laughs> lab network when I was setting this up, uh, so that's kind of stuck in there. Uh, anyhow, here we go. It's running. Uh, I will pause this again and come back as soon as it completes, and we will start the restoration process. And we'll also take a look at what is written into S3, um, walk through it, expand you know, folders, directories, uh, and look at the files themselves to see how Zerto stores the data. Now our retention process completed, uh, but then I, and I've restored twice by now, as you can see, um, but I ran into some issues uh, again with um, resources on my, my lab. So uh, I'm gonna kick off the restore again, and this time I, I'm going to actually power some things off first, so uh, what I want to do is, let's see, shut down this, shut down these workers, and shut down my master, just to give my lab a little more resources to be able to um, restore the data and turn it on so we can actually see what's going on with the VM when it's restored. So as soon as that's completed, all right, cool. All right, so we're gonna go, uh, before I actually restore though, um, actually, uh, I can do the restore and then we can take a look at the files. So, uh, again, there's my VPG. Uh, I'm gonna go restore VM or VPG. And I'm gonna choose to restore worker one. Next, I'll choose that point in time from our last backup. I'm going to choose my host, my data store. 
a uh, few things down here that I'm going to do. Um, so uh, I do want to power on automatically. Um, and we can do things like uh, I can put it on the isolated network. So if my uh, original systems were still running, I can put the I can restore this to run and power up into the isolated network so it doesn't cause a conflict with the running machines. I can also give a new MAC address uh, so there's no MAC conflict reported by vCenter. Uh, I'm not going to change the IP address or do anything with DNS. So uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. Uh, simulate what I would have actually done. So uh, we've gotten and configured all that. We're going to go next and restore. So I've got that running task now. You can see the new restore process has kicked off. Uh, so while that's taking place, um, and we can also see that Zerto has created that worker VM already to restore to. So uh, while that's taking place, we'll jump over to S3 real quick. Oops. And in our buckets, so just to take a few, uh, look at a few things, right? So you want to see what's going on with S3. I will go into our repository. I uh, see a bunch of folders. Um, if you're looking for your backups, they're not actually in here. This is a bunch of manifests and, and whatnot, configuration data, metadata. Um, your backups are actually going to be stored in pools. So we'll go into pools. We'll see a folder for each VM. And if I'm reading this correctly, this would be worker one because of the ordering. Go into that. A few more a few more items here. So we've got our data folder. Now this is where the backup files are actually stored. Uh, this is our data object mapper, which contains information about the data that you'd like to restore and, and uh, data that's made up of, or what the data inside here is made up of. So go into data and what we'll see here is how Zerto stores the files. Uh, so these are all gonna be .box files. It's a it's sort of own internal uh, naming convention, uh, but we see that the five, the data is broken up into five megabyte chunks. Um, not entirely sure what the four point nine megabyte pieces are, uh, but in a sense, uh, in an essence, it's it's about five megs per file for the entirety of the VM. All right, so nothing nothing to do in here. So let's switch back over to uh, Zerto. We're at twelve percent. Um, jump into vCenter. I will just let this continue. Uh, if this goes and performs anywhere close to what I saw in the previous two times, it took about four minutes to restore the data. Okay, that's just about done. Configure the VM, it's putting it on the isolated network, and it's powered it on. Let's launch the web console and see what's going on here. much faster than the previous two attempts. Let's try something else here. Uh, since I don't have my other Kate's VMs on, I'm going to switch this back to the actual bridge network. IP address. There we go. All right, cool. So it's back up. Uh, it's been restored. Uh, I can do whatever I need to do with this. I can use it for more testing, um, I can create a new VM out of it, uh, but I have no use for it, so what I'll do here is I'll just shut it down. And that's pr 
pretty much it. Um, if we look here, the last restore we did, yeah, four minutes. So, yeah, pretty quick, um, and it works. So, uh, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. It's at Eugene J Torres, uh, or um, or my blog. It's gene-torres.com. Thanks for watching.